everybody, it's Allie with Miss Allie's Kitchen. Today we are making my heirloom tomato galette. Um, it's a new recipe, it is our pie of the month recipe. I am kind of obsessed with heirloom tomatoes right now. I got these, they are local tomatoes from my local grocery store. Um, I am just like jazz. I went out and picked some fresh basil, so it smells amazing in here. Tomato, basil. Basically, this galette is super easy. It starts off with my basic pie crust recipe, but instead of using sugar, we're using a little bit of Italian seasoning in there. So I'm just gonna show you step by step how I put everything together. I'm gonna get these guys out of the way. And the first thing that we just need to do is to roll out the galette crust or just a simple pastry dough. My pastry dough has a mix of flour and butter. This has fresh cracked pepper, a little bit of Himalayan sea salt, and some Italian seasoning. So I've had this dough actually chilling overnight, and a little thing that I do when my pie dough is really cold is I just kind of take it in my hand and press it out, let the warmth of my hand make it a little bit more pliable. And then I like to always roll out my dough on parchment it makes it easier I've just got my whole canister of flour here sprinkle it rolling pin um, this rolling pin is really cool it is it was a gift from a family friend and it is I forget exactly when it is from but it actually has a hole here and you can fill it with ice if you'd like and it's always really good to keep pastry super cold and chilled um but i just thought that was a fun little fact you might have to get a little bit muscular if your pie dough is still pretty cold like mine is um i'm using the warmth of my hand again to press it out but as you can see my pie dough is nice and smooth um it doesn't crack as easily as some others that i've worked with before i just use butter and flour for sweet pie crust, it does have sugar in it. Oh, we're preheated. My oven is preheating, or did preheat, to 375 degrees. Um, anyway, pie dough, super easy. I like butter. A lot of people use shortening. I don't use any shortening in um, my recipes. I like butter and coconut oil, but I think butter is best. Ooh, get my workout in here. All right, we're just looking for a nice uniform circle. And you can see that I'm not pressing down super hard on the edges yet because that kind of can make your pie crust crack. So that I'm just gonna come back in here with my hands. There we go. And keep in mind, I forgot to take out my pie crust. If you take it out like 20 to 30 minutes before you roll it out, it's gonna be a little bit easier. But that's okay, I'm working on my muscles. So basically we just want a nice uniform circle. We're gonna put a filling mixture in the middle of the galette and then top everything with heirloom tomatoes, finish with a little bit of salt and pepper and Parmesan and fresh basil. So this is an awesome recipe to use up if, um, to use if you need to use up a lot of tomatoes or basil from your garden. Um, you could even like blend some basil into the filling mixture, make a little bit of like a pesto situation too. I love to do that. Um, so yeah, anywho. All right, we're almost rolled out. This has been like the longest rolling of pie crust ever. And of course, we're on camera. Okay, almost there. And the one thing that I always preach with any of my pies and galettes as well is Nothing ever has to be perfect. It's like rustic. Um, I heard it on the kitchen once. I think it was like Katie Lee on the kitchen. She was like, yeah, if you put rustic on a restaurant menu, you can charge $5 more per plate. But rustic is in. It's okay if things aren't perfect. Um, this is about the size that I want my galette to be. You can see that there. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit more flour. This is how I fold up any of my pie dough. Um, sprinkle on a little bit more flour. Then I just take my parchment. Fold in half, sprinkle on a little bit more flour, and then I just fold in half again, right like that. 
I already have my baking sheet ready. And what I like to do, sometimes since there's a lot of excess flour on the parchment that I roll the pastry out on, I like to use um, a separate baking sheet. And then I'm just gonna stretch a little more, it's still a little thick. So this is just gonna hang out back here on the stove while I prepare my tomato filling. All right, get this out of the way. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just, I did actually pre-make my filling. So this is just a mixture of mozzarella, mayonnaise, a little bit of Parmesan, Italian seasoning, and pepper. I didn't salt this yet because we're gonna salt the top of the tomatoes and you don't wanna to get too salty. You can always add salt at the end, you can't take away. So set this to the side, set the basil to the side. I'm gonna put some basil in this now and then top some of it with basil. I always like to top things with olive oil. And then I probably will only need like one and a half of these tomatoes since they're really large. And my galette's not super huge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a knife and do some nice thin slices for these heirloom tomatoes. Again, it's gonna look really cool that this is rustic because the heirloom tomatoes are kind of like a funky shape and the galette's gonna be a little bit funky. I'm just gonna get a couple of slices. I kind of want one of these like really big ones from this side and everything will be layered. It'll be really pretty. The large ones, the lighter color and the darker color. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I just love tomatoes. I think if I had to give up every, well, technically tomatoes are a fruit, but like any other produce, I would pick tomatoes. Like if I had to give something up, I would keep tomatoes. That didn't make sense, but I feel like you guys don't know what I mean. So tomatoes are off to the side. And then here we go. We've got our crust back. So I want you guys to see here. All right, here's our crust. And then I have the filling and just pop it right out on there. You can use an offset spatula if you want. I have one somewhere, um, but I just think a spatula is easy. But what I want you guys to see is the fact that I'm leaving like a little bit of a crust. Since this is a galette, it's gonna get folded up. So. Leaving a little bit of a crust on the galette so that we have enough room to fold up and make that like rustic crust that galettes are so famous for. Um, just kind of evenly spread this all over ah, your dough. Again, not perfect. Rustic is great here. So this is just gonna kind of melt. The mayonnaise gives it a little bit more fat and flavor. Um, and it just kind of acts as a binder, so you're not just having mozzarella cheese at the bottom of this, like a pizza. It just kind of takes it up a notch. Um, so that's about good. And so you can see that I have a nice border of crust here that we will just fill this all with tomatoes now. So I'm just gonna kind of lay my tomatoes down, arrange them, overlap a little bit, Hmm. And this is where you can get creative. You can use cherry tomatoes. You can use obviously heirloom. You can use Roma. Literally whatever you have on hand, just use that tomato. And I want this guy to be a little bit more situated like that. That's nice there. And like if you have thin parts, you can tuck some thin parts underneath. Let's see, I just kind of want it. Just like a really fun way to get creative. There we go. All right, so this is kind of what we have. We're kind of overlapping each other. I don't want to dump too much. I'm gonna wipe my hands off. Actually, before we fold it up though, I am gonna put on just a little sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. You're gonna use about like two teaspoons. I just kind of eyeball this. And then I always like fresh cracked pepper on top of my tomatoes. Um, I have this kind of like a coarse grind, so you do get that toothiness. 
of the peppercorn and it's kind of spicy and bite. If you don't like a lot of pepper, don't add as much. Um, that's kind of to taste. And then since we didn't salt this filling, um, I always taste it. It is pretty salty because of that mozzarella cheese, but I still always like to add a little bit of sea salt on top of my beautiful tomatoes. I do like basil that has been cooked. So I'm just gonna tear a couple of leaves here. But then we are gonna top with more fresh basil at the end. I will probably chiffonade, which just means like to roll up and then dice, we have those nice little ribbons. So now we're gonna fold up the edges. So just start by folding up one edge and then folding another portion kind of on top of it. Kind of hard to explain, but you can see, you can see here, I'm trying to see how you guys can see best. You can see that it's just kind of folding in on itself. So all we have to do is just kind of press down and make sure it stays. You kind of want to fold all the way up the to, to the tomato. There we go. This one's a little, a little long over here. Probably could have gone a little bit farther. That's okay. You can just kind of eyeball it as you're going along. There we go. Beautiful. So for these thicker pieces, it's nice that we have more of an edge because we can just kind of fold like this. Last piece here. Okay. And there is your galette. It looks kind of like that. Again, I don't want it to completely fall off, but you can see there. I am going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees. You can use an egg wash, or I actually like to, with this recipe, drizzle on a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, just kind of over the whole top and get the sides a little bit. And I'll just kind of rub that in where you could use a pastry brush, but this just helps everything crisp up really beautifully. I don't know if you guys can see, but you can see the flux of Italian seasoning and the dough. There you go. You can see that there. Um, so it just has like so many layers of flavors, which I'm obsessed with. And then if you really want to get crazy, a little bit more Parmesan on the crust. So this, oh my gosh, is just gorgeous. I'm gonna let you guys see one more time. I'm gonna pop it into the oven and then make sure you pop over to my website, www.missallyskitchen.com to get the recipe. It is just my tomato galette. Um, the recipe is also on Instagram and I'll see you guys in about like 30 minutes when this is all done and bubbly and the filling is melted and the tomatoes and basil are nice and fragrant. So I hope you'll make it. I'll see you guys next time.